the parables of Christ. It's amazing how a simple story, a, a way that Jesus shared with the people around him opened their hearts. They opened our hearts. Then they brought tears to the eyes of those who were there, I'm sure, because, man, they sure bring tears to our eyes sometimes the way Jesus shares with us. You know what? It, it brings hope to spirits, to their to their spirits. They they saw Jesus out there, I'm sure, up on a mountainside or a dirty, dusty road, and Jesus was telling parables and sharing with them and stories to, to encourage, to inspire, to lift up, to bring hope, to share salvation, because it sure brings hope to my spirit when I read the words of Christ and the way he talks and how he shares to man and woman. The parables of Christ. I, I don't think a lot of a lot is focused on that many times in church and ministry, even though we read the red, red words and we read the red words, and, and yet we've become accustomed to the story and the way that Christ has shared. And you see, I think there's a deeper level to the way Christ spoke to the people at that time and the way the Word of God speaks to us now because you got to understand, Jesus is God and we are created by Him. And so God knows what triggers our minds, that we need visuals, that we need understanding, that we're not the brightest. <laughs> we're, we're not the brightest of creatures sometimes. We become overwhelmed with the dumbest things and we become obsessed with, with lust and stuff and things and this and we follow the half the crowd and we follow the herd and we're just kind of like sheep sometimes. And so Jesus has to, in a sense, in a sense, dumb it down for us so that we can put our minds around so that we can understand in the words that we understand, we understand comfort, we understand love, we understand um, stability, we understand safety, because that is all things that we need. We understand hunger, we understand thirst. The parables of Christ is what we're going to look at this evening. And we'll look at one parable, but then we'll dive in a little deeper into why the parables, why the stories. And I pray it opens your minds a little bit to the to, to, to the way that Christ shared over and over um, about the the ways that we can change our lives. So we'll look today. My message is entitled today, The Parable. We're going to be looking at a passage in Mark, Mark 4, 30 through 34, just a few passages. And I pray it opens your eyes. And, and you can see and apply what Christ is saying, what Jesus is saying to our lives may be a little better. I think when we understand the parables and why they're spoken to us in that way, the stories that Jesus told, it helps us to understand a little better what he's trying to get across. Or maybe, just maybe, we're not meant to understand it all. Ooh, all right. <laughs> Had to throw that out there. All right. Um, I'm going to read it to you a little bit at a time. Well, I'll read the first parable of to you all together, and then I'll share with you what God has laid on my heart. Thank you, those of you who are here today in Aurora, Colorado, in our facility. It's amazing we have our passage up on the board, our, um, on the monitor, for Mark 4, 30-34, Inspire Church Family Online. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for your love, your support, your tithes, your offerings for our church. Thank you for watching the videos. Share them out. Let other people get a chance to, to hear the word of Christ all throughout social media. And thank you for your love for our outreach ministry. We're going to be out on the streets of Denver, Colorado here this coming Saturday. Hallelujah. Share and love. Lead people to Christ, clothing and feeding those in need. Mark 4. We're going to read 30 through 32 and it says and he said to what shall we liken the kingdom of God 
or, or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown into the ground is smaller than all the seeds on earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and it becomes greater than all the herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. You see, Jesus took something that we all search for and need in order to exist, which is shelter, comfort, security, and shared it in a way that we can picture in our minds. It starts out here in this passage, Mark 4, verse 30, it says, and then he said, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God or with what parable shall we picture it? So he's trying to get our imaginations. He's trying to get our minds wrapped around what can I benefit from a relationship with God? What can I benefit? What comfort? What is it going to, as humans need, what will it give me should I choose this path? So he says, in what parable shall we picture it? You see, Jesus understands that we need a visual. Jesus understands that, that we need to see something. We need our minds triggered. We need different things to go on. So he devised in his mind or in his speech, however it was, to use a place of protection and comfort to describe the kingdom of God. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you, but I've been pretty much homeless in my life. There was a time where I was sleeping on people's couches. I was sleeping on back porches. I had one suitcase worth of belongings, and I was crashing from place to place to place, and that was for two or three years of my life. Some of y'all been totally homeless with nothing. Some of you may have been close to that like me, and I pray to God that you've never been in that situation in your life. But there is something about comfort. There is something about protection that the human body needs. We need to be out of the storms. We don't have coats like, like the wolves and the horses and the cows where they can stand outside in the weather and get snowed on and rained on and sun and not get sunburned and all these things. We are thin skinned, <laughs> you know. We can't stand those kinds of things. So one of the things man, woman, always try to do is build shelter, build comfort, find protection, put up fences. It's just something the man needs. The woman needs. We need that bond. And so Jesus says, to the kingdom of God, if a man, oh, that's the wrong word. To what shall we liken the kingdom of God or with what parable shall we picture it? So Jesus is laying out a design for us to get to a point and he says is it like a mustard seed which when it is sown in the ground is smaller than all the seeds on earth now the matter of the, the situation is a mustard seed is not the smallest seed on earth but in that region at that time of all of the things that they were sowing and raising and growing it was probably the smallest seed you could buy in the market so for those who were there they're trying to wrap their hands around what jesus is saying and he's trying to give them something that they can understand that we can understand that we can understand and the mustard seed is very small. That's one of the few things that they could grow in that region that would, would take off from something that tiny. And so it says, it says, is it like a mustard seed which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds on earth? Verse 32 says, but when it is sown, it grows and becomes greater than all the herd. You see, I'm not sure what a mustard seed looks like, what a mustard plant looks like. I don't know that I've ever seen one in my life. 
I don't know where they grow them. I don't know if they, <laughs> if they grow mustard in the United States of America. I couldn't tell you what it is. But according to what I found online, is it is a, a is this one of the smallest seeds and one of the smallest seeds used at that time. And it grows into a bush about six feet tall with large branches. So from this tiny, tiny, tiny little seed grows something magnificent. I'm about five, six. Yeah, I'm a tall guy. So I'm imagining a mustard plant it grows somewhere around as tall as this sign. And it grows real big and it has big branches and lots of cover. You see, ladies and gentlemen, what shall we like in the kingdom of heaven to? Something bigger than us. Something more beautiful than we can understand. And maybe we can wrap our minds around the fact that even from something as small as a mustard seed or a little bit of faith, a little bit of trust. But if we put our hope in God, that little bit of hope, that little bit of trust, that, that, that first scary step to say yes to God and, and receive him as our savior can grow and grow into something that will cover us and protect us. See, once it's sown, it grows and it grows and it grows much like our faith when we first trust God and we say, you know, I don't care what anybody says, I need this in my life. This is what I have. Jesus is sharing that day and he's trying to encourage people to trust in the kingdom of God, to hear his word, to see the parables of Christ. And I can visualize, even though I've never seen a mustard plant that I know of, my mind sees it. My mind sees the comfort that it could be if I were a bird, if I were a small animal, if I were something that needed shelter that day to get out of the sun, to get out of the rain, to, to build a nest. You see, we need to look at the kingdom of God in that manner. And we go through to this life worried about our own homes and our own where we're going to sleep tonight and all these things and that's vitally important and it's what the human body needs but most importantly we need our heavenly body we need to understand that there there is comfort there is a place of comfort for the birds, the creatures, the others animals ladies and gentlemen where is your comfort today? Is it in your belongings? Is it in the stuff you've got? Is it in the stuff you don't have? Are we just envious all the time? Or are we just looking at other people's things going, man, lucky. <laughs> you know, why don't I have that? Why don't I have this? I've been there myself, ladies and gentlemen, where I, 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 I didn't understand why I couldn't have what others did. I've talked to you before about how I have church envy sometimes. I'll drive down the road and I'll look at big facilities and I'm like, why couldn't that be us? Why couldn't we have a place to store our food and our clothing and for people to come in and hear the word of God teach young ones how to serve Christ. But I see how God, how to come in my mustard seed of faith when we started this ministry has blossomed and has grown. Hallelujah. We almost closed the door many times. But God has provided us with a shelter, a little place where we can get in and get out from under the rain, a little place where we can share with individuals on the street or maybe someone will come in the door and 
We could show them love and care and provide someone with food and a hug and a kiss and, and, and say, God loves you and so do we, you see. We all have our own little mustard seeds that we throw out to individuals, up to, to God and say, Lord, I, I, I'm looking to you for my provision. I'm looking to the kingdom for my covering. I'm looking to the kingdom for my security. Or the parables of Christ. How when we look deeply into something as simple as this passage, it is, it is far deeper than man and woman can ever understand. These are the words of Christ. So what shall we like in the kingdom of God, Jesus asks. Or with what parable shall we picture it, he asks again. Is it like a mustard seed, which when it is sown in the ground is smaller than all of the seeds on earth? But when it is sown, it grows and becomes greater than all the herbs, shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we never know what's going to happen with our faith. We never know what's going to happen when we trust God and we put our lives in his hands and we do, and we take those scary steps and we trust and we trust and we trust the kingdom of God to provide and to protect. We never know what's going to blossom from the ground because the ground that God toils and swatters and, and feeds is fertile ground. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we can live and dig and dig and dig all we can in the dryness that is this earth. For stuff and for stuff and for stuff, and for people and things that we can attain and be hollow and dead inside. But when we soil, when we dig, when we plant into the fertile ground that is the kingdom of God with the little faith that we have, with whatever strength we can muster, and we put it into the kingdom, and we put it into others, and we put it into ministry, and we put it into our family, and we put it into our kids, and we put it into ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta get this stuff in us. We gotta get these things in our minds. We need to contemplate the word of God. And things happen. Things happen that we cannot explain. Things that we cannot take credit for. Our lives begin to change. Our desires are different than they were last year. And we have a shelter. We have this big shelter, this mustard plant. <laughs> but it's the kingdom of God and it covers us and it keeps us <sighs> keeps us refreshed even when we don't know we even want to get out of bed it, it keeps us focused when all these other things are distracting and distracting but we're able to focus on God and we're able to feed ourselves and feed ourselves even though we may not have the place of our dreams to lay our head And even though we may not have all the things that we desire from this earth, we can lay where we are and still be thankful. To what shall we like in the kingdom of God or with what parable shall we picture it, Christ asks. Is it the mustard seed, which when it is sown in the ground is smaller than all the seeds on earth? But when it is sown, it, sows, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under it. We're looking at Psalms 4. We're now going into 33 and 34. And it says, and 
with many such parables, he spoke the word to them that were able to hear it. But without a parable, he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. Now, this is a little bit of the narrative here between the parables that Christ was sharing at this time. You see, we're getting a little bit of an insight to the way that Christ spoke to those who were there with him on the roads or in the synagogues and how Christ is speaking to us now when we open the red words and we read the parables of Christ and the little stories that grab our interest and when we dig deep into these parables we begin to understand, you see, these parables were the regular method of public teaching from Jesus. This was the way that he spoke to those who came. This was the way that he shared hope. These were the ways that he brought our spirits up. These were the ways that he opened the hearts and the minds of those who came. And you know, sometimes you have to speak to a child as if to a child because they have yet to comprehend and understand many things that come their way. They don't quite get the fact that we've lived a long life, that we know many things. And I'll share something with Axel, my son, trying to teach him a lesson <laughs> that I've learned along the way that is, uh, maybe I learned it the hard way, right? <laughs> maybe we, we learned this the hard way. And I'll share it with him. And I'll be expecting him to say, yeah, Dad, that's, that's great. Uh, I, I understand it. It just doesn't sink in. Just doesn't sink in. And he hasn't had enough life experience yet. He hasn't gone through the different things. I mean, yeah, he's in school and he's doing this and that, but he's only six years old. Or yet to be six in a few days he turned six. Jesus knows everything. Jesus, well, there was never before, there's never after. He is our rock, our foundation, the I am. Jesus knows everything. He is God. And he's on this earth in human form. And he's fulfilling the prophecies that had gone before us. And he's sharing hope and trying to get people to believe in more than the things they can touch and they can eat and we can smell. So he has to in a sense, dumb it down for us to comprehend. And in the passage that we just read, 30 through 32, Mark 4, he's trying to get us to understand what the kingdom of heaven has to offer us. And he uses the parable of a shade tree and plant where the birds could find shelter and build the nest. Something we all need. We all need that shelter and that comfort and that place of belonging, that place of home. And that is what the kingdom of heaven is, ladies and gentlemen. It is our rightful home. It is where we can spend eternity. It is where we can have peace when we say yes to Jesus, when we give our life to Christ. We can be assured of a home, of comfort, of shelter. Maybe down here we don't have those things. Maybe down here we're struggling to have a place to sleep, a place over our roof. 
Maybe down here we've been distracted by stuff more so than the kingdom of God. Shame on us. But it is the sin nature of man and woman. There's going to be struggle. There's going to be hurt. And it said that with such many parables, he spoke the word to them and they were able to hear it. But without a parable, he did not speak to them. You see, Jesus understood when to speak and when not to, how to share and when not to. Sometimes the best thing, the most important thing to do is to just show love, to be there, to care. We can't fix every situation. And Jesus knew how to reach the audience that was there on that day. You see, but as the passage continues into 34, Mark 4, 34, it says, but without the parables, he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. Even the people closest to Christ did not understand what he was getting to. Even the people closest to Jesus who lived and slept and ate bathed and all of those things with him for years did not understand what God was talking about all the time. How many of us understand the Bible? <laughs> How many of us got that all figured out and even understand what this parable is about unless we dig deeper <clears throat> and look into it? You know, sometimes things need a little explaining. I know it does a lot for me. I'll read a passage over and over and it makes no sense at all. And one day, snap, bam, there it is. I get it now. That is when the Holy Spirit is speaking into our lives and opening our eyes and, 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 and explaining all things. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, we need to compliment contemplate the word of God. We need to get it into our spirits as much as possible. We need to hear when Christ speaks. And maybe it's through a parable. Maybe it's through a story that I can envision in my eyes. I can see. I know that the mustard seed, I don't even know if I ever held a mustard seed, but I imagine it's pretty small. I know how to sow something. I know how to put it into the ground. And I know what a plant looks like as it grows. And I don't even know if I know what a mustard plant looks like. But I imagine and I can see it in this magical memory and visualization that Christ has given each of us. And I can see the parable and I can see how it speaks. And I can place that with my understanding what the kingdom of God provides safety, security, ladies and gentlemen, a home. Hallelujah, ladies and gentlemen. Let me encourage you, let me inspire you, let me lift you up today. Dig deeper into the stories that Christ shares. Look between the lines, use your imagination visualize what he's talking about because that's how Jesus explains the story. That's how Christ opens our eyes to its meaning. We have to use all of our senses when we read the word of God. We can't just grasp it mentally. We have to see it. We have to slide ourselves into the word of God and then it becomes real. Then it becomes real. Ladies and gentlemen, it's real. It's real. It's real. Dear Lord, we come before you. Lord, I'm sorry for all the times I just try to understand the word of God without getting it into my heart, just trying to intellectually read it and figure it out. But Lord, help us to use all of our senses when we open the Bible. May we 
cry and laugh and be moved. Oh, I feel the Spirit of God have you. Oh, Lord, speak to us. Let the Spirit talk to us. Enlighten us. Thank you, Jesus, for the parables that you share that have opened our eyes to so many ways to see the kingdom of God. Jesus, thank you for providing salvation. Maybe someone watching this message and never given your life to Christ. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Make my home in heaven with you. I need this comfort. I need this shelter. I need this home. In Jesus' name I pray.